Very encouraging message, brethren. I trust it was for you as well as it was for me. But what we saw here in this testimony of Abraham is we, what we see here every time we look at it is we see the keeping power of God yes. in that. Yes. And we were, cons- we were on to consider in this message like why he was keeping him. He said, I will multiply thy seed. That's a promise he gave to Abraham. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. But what if, hypothetically, God were to say, I will bless your seed, but you got to keep yourself alive, make sure nothing bad happens to you. You know, stay out of trouble, stay out of danger, make sure you keep Sarah safe. You see, that would completely change things, wouldn't it? Well, if you saw if that were the case, Abraham would have perished. Sarah would have perished if that were the case. So we see that this had to, that God, in order for that to happen, God had to keep him. If God was going to bless yeah. the earth through Abraham's seed, he had to keep Abraham. Amen. Otherwise, it would have never happened. Because we saw at least two occasions where the same thing happened twice. They're going through a city and men like the look of Sarah. And so God had to intervene, otherwise would have lost. <laughs> even, even though there was some kind of movement made to prevent harm from coming, it's God still had to step in. So I want you to consider, as I exhort you, other things God has promised that require him to keep men. Like we have this promise, he said, them who he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Now that is going to happen. It is. That's a work of God. Or like when Jesus, Jesus prayed in the garden, he said that, that, speaking of the believers, that they might be one even as we are one. That's going to happen. Or that we're talking about Jesus, that the church is preserved, blameless, and presented to God, blameless and without spot. That's going to happen. But in order for any of those things to happen, God has to keep men. He does. I mean, that's something that requires his power to do. In the case of Aaron, you saw that he was unable to change anything in certain situations by his own power. You saw that in the case of Pharaoh, there was nothing he could do. Sarah was taken, now what? At best, what he did was he kept himself from being killed, but that didn't stop men from taking Sarah. You saw in the case where Chedorlaomer arose with these other kings, some might say 300 men couldn't beat that well in a normal scenario, normal. Maybe that could be true, but God was in this. That, that, changed, that completely changed the outcome. See, with God, a few men are mighty when they're with God. There are many that are with the world. You saw in the case of Abimelech, God had to step in. You're in a position where you couldn't do anything, where he couldn't do anything. And so in this, we're learning to rely on the keeping power of our God to bring about what he has promised. Remember, it's his promise. He's not bringing about our objectives, but his own. And because he promised it, it will happen. We can take joy in that. And so I want to exhort you in this, in casting your care upon the Lord, that we're made in such a way where we have to depend on God to make it through this world. I mean, you have to. You really do. You can't, you can't get through it. The world's made in such a way where mortal men cannot just make it through it on their own power. Not make it to eternity, I mean. They can't. They have to keep turning to God for strength, turning to Him for understanding, turning to Him for comfort, turning to, turning to Him for safety. He's a strong and mighty tower, the psalmist said. He, the place they can go to at all times. That's how men has been created. But in this account that we read, I want to encourage you in this casting your care on the Lord that remember that all things are possible with God. Remember I did say that? Remember Jesus said, whatsoever you ask in faith, it shall be done. There's a reason why he said that. We shouldn't like say, well, that doesn't, no. If you ask in faith, it will be done. That's what Jesus said. He meant what he said. He meant what he said. God said all things are possible, and then he said he's able. We have that too. Remember, God is able. Now in this case, Abraham couldn't do anything, but God could. Now, there's, there's, you're going to be in positions like that a lot, too. I can't do anything, but God can. God can. So that drives you to put your care on the Lord. Because I can't, I, I can't control this. I can't overcome this. I can't change this. But God can. So I want you to take that from this. That also this matter of keeping the faith. I mean, that all, that's really what all this hinges on, is your faith. I mean, that, that's where all these promises come to play is when people have faith. That's when we can talk this way. God will keep you to the end. That's when we can talk that way. We can talk to faith that way. God is able to bring you through. That's what you say to, that's what you say to a person living by faith. So I say that to you right now. 
And also remember that it's bigger than just us in the work of salvation. I exhort you to consider that God is being known through what he's doing in you. In the end, that's what's going to happen. People are going to know things about God through what has been demonstrated in you. People will look at angels, principalities, and high places and heavenly places are looking at what God's doing in you and are learning something about God. God's wisdom demonstrated in heavenly places in you. We've seen it here in Abraham. Something, was, something about God was demonstrated here. We learned something about God through something he did through Abraham. And so likewise, that's how he's working on all of us. If you get a big picture of what God's doing, he's making himself known. He's making known things about him that were not previously known through his dealings and workings in men. So I want, I want you to encourage you to think that when any kind of circumstance where you're trusting your care, that this is bigger than just, just you. Consider that higher beings are actually growing in understanding of God. So we minister these things that exhort you. Cast your care on the Lord and consider what the work of God. Consider the outcome. I mean, consider if God did take all the outcomes out of Scripture. If he says live by faith and you know mortify the mem- mortify your members, put off the old man. You have, but what if he left the outcome out? About what's going to happen at the end after all of this is over after the world ends? What if he left all of that out? And it was just kind of left up to speculation as to how this thing's going to turn out. Well, he hasn't done that. Amen. He's given the outcome. See, and he says, "I will multiply thy seed." That's an outcome. That's something that's going to happen. That's a promise. So he gave, he gave Abraham an outcome too. He's given us an outcome. So let's bank on that. That's why we have words. We have words like many false Christs shall rise and also deceive many if it were possible. Even the elect will bank on that if it were possible. Faith can link on that. So, I mean, consider these words. Consider God is not going to be frustrated in his will. The expectation for us is let's not do anything to frustrate God, but let's keep the faith so that God can do his work in us. So I leave those things for you to consider. We now open for things that you have gotten out of this message. Comments, insights.